Welcome back, everybody. In just a couple of weeks, for some students, are going to be hitting the books again. Um, heading back into it, we've got education specialist and owner of Bio and Chem Tutoring, Dr. Carla Hilton, with us to give us a few tips on how to get them ready and put them back in back to school mode. Good morning to you. Morning Thank you for Simone. being here Thank this you morning. Thank you so much for having me. Typically, when should back to school preparation begin? Getting them reoriented and so Well, on. ideally, we want to do it two to three weeks before school begins, right? Or oh, should I start already? Is what yes, <laughs> or well, some, some, most schools start in two weeks' time. So if we start now, that's a good, good time. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to trust you on that because I haven't started doing it yet. But there's some specific tips I want to get into. So um, they've gone through the entire summer. They're going to bed when they want to. They're getting up when they want to. Free paper done. Right. Born. So no. we definitely have to get them back into a sleep there. routine. So let's start, let's start there. Right. Um, as you said, they're going to bed all hours and they're waking up late in the morning. Remember now school, you have a strict regime. So we have to start implementing a bedtime schedule mm -hmm. and wake up time from now so that the mo Monday morning when they're going back to school, this is not a shock to their system. Yeah. Right. So we need to know, depending on the age of our child, what is the, uh, the ideal amount of hours of sleep that they require. So let's talk right? a little bit about that. So if your child is in preschool. Oh, they require nine to ten hours of sleep. So, so by, therefore, by eight o'clock? By, by eight o'clock for sure. I mean, depending on what time they have to get up mm -hmm. to, to get ready to go to school, mm -hmm. you know, transit time, etc. Right, high schoolers, they need about seven hours as well. I mean, that's a long time as well, and a lot of them are not getting seven hours mm -hmm. sleep, but that's really important for proper brain function. Gotcha. So, so rest that brain and get up fresh the next day. So by eight o'clock, put them in bed, um, parents. Evaluate last year's performance and set new academic goals. Okay, this is particularly important for high schoolers, right? We must evaluate last year's performance. Not that we're going to take it as an opportunity to quarrel with our child. Let us say they didn't do something. They didn't perform as well as we would like, but we need to look at it. So for example, if in biology, let's say they got a C, we need to discuss what are some of the problems? What caused you to get a C? and then look at ways to improve this C. Mm -hmm. So it might be that you might have to speak with the teacher, you might have to hire a private tutor, whatever it is, you have to find solutions. We need to be solution oriented yeah. rather than quarreling and making a big deal. Yeah, the past quarreling, is the the past. quarreling is not going to help. Right, we need right. to find a way to encourage the kids, got quarreling just going to make them feel less than and that would plug into just poor performance generally Definitely, speaking because that's it. fear. Um, what about the parents who have children who are leaving prep or primary and going into high school? How do you apply this particular goal of evaluating last year's performance and setting they're stepping into a whole well, new they're environment. Well, as you said, they're stepping into a whole new environment, so they would have done GSAT. So maybe we don't have much evaluation to do because we already know what their grades are. They're going into a, a new school environment. We need to try to familiarize them with this school environment, encourage them, talk a lot, meet the teachers, because a lot of them are going to be scared, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's they're coming from prep school mm -hmm. and they're going into this large environment environment they're going to be scared so you as a parent just have to be talking with them all the time getting to the teachers as the school term begins and you know when they come home from school make sure you talk find out if there's any problems bullying can be a problem so you need to find this Gosh, out in those lines of communication open with right. your child <laughs> school supplies if you don't get them yet Get them now, get them today, <laughs> right? I mean, this goes without saying that you really don't want to be waiting on last minute. So therefore, you should have everything, you know, and if you don't get them this week, yeah. make sure you have something to record, things like um, homework, a homework book. And of course, don't just get a homework book when a lot of them, depending on their child, you might actually have to supervise in the first few weeks once school has started, to make sure that they're actually using it and looking at them when they come home and doing the homework, it's right? Yes, them going back to school, you know, it's really right. yeah. <laughs> We are going back as well. Mm -hmm. um, just remember that I need to start wrapping books. I forgot <laughs> all about that. Reading and writing. Okay, um, some schools have reading lists 
and they require a book report, some schools, and if your child is going to such a school, make sure this is done. If they're not going to such a school, you still need to be getting that brain active. Mm -hmm. So they still should be reading and they can write a review for you, mm -hmm. you know, and um, practice some maths as well. And, you know, just get, get the, the brain, brain cells stimulated. The, okay. Get familiar with the syllabus. That's important. That's very important, especially if your child is sitting CSEC or CAPE. No, um, no teacher will actually be able to do every single topic mm -hmm. because time is limited. So you're, ch you know, you have to think about this. It's either your child is going to do extras, or they will have to do the work on their own. So they well, need to know Well, I don't know any of that because I syllabus. see schools now going mm -hmm. from seven to six. I see schools that have children up to six o'clock. Boy, that can be quite done. exhausting. You think? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but if they're getting the syllabus covered and they're doing enough practice, uh, that is also something very important. Mm -hmm. so, tough though, mm -hmm. tough. Um, and then, of course, you want to focus on some extracurricular to kind of get the edge off for them. Yes, no, it's important. Yeah. All students should be doing some form of extracurricular. But when you are planning this now, make sure, sometimes a lot of parents, you know, the whole day, the whole schedule is packed from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. every single day. You have to make time for independent study as well as relaxation, as well as exercise, if in case the extracurricular is not a mm -hmm. sport-related mm -hmm. activity. Why do you right? say ex every child should have an extracurricular activity? What about the parents who say, I don't think that's important? Why? No, it's Why? important. It cannot always be about academics. They need to be well-rounded. And you have many clubs that teach them other things or even sporting activities, which is good for them. Mm -hmm. So you have to include it. It's just that you have to, you know, make sure you're thinking about giving them time to study yeah. as well okay. and relax as well. So that ties into a point that's not on our list, but the pressure on the children is so great especially the ones who are going into exam mode, whether it's PEP or CSEC or whatever you want to call it. What's your advice to parents who have children who are doing that exam, who are so nervous themselves that they don't know what to do? I suggest that they ease up on the pressure. I mean, they are children, right? And sometimes too much pressure is what causes them to perform poorly. Okay. Right? I mean, they Gosh. must relax, mm -hmm. right? How you know when you're doing too much, Doc? How you know? And how do you strike a balance? Well, um, you need to talk to your child, for example, and I'm and is not scared of you. Right. And that they will be honest with you. But, I mean, you, you, depending on the age of your child, your child must go outside and play. So if they're GSAT, well, PEP, no, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Students, I mean, I personally don't believe in the whole lot of extras for students at that age. I mean, I think focus should be there on play, mm -hmm. right? And Kids that have helps, to play. right? Oh gosh, I feel so bad for them sometimes. But I think, as you said, once we get the balance right, mm -hmm. I remember. I know school is a full-time job for them at this point, but they need to nourish that other side of themselves of course, as well. Of course, of yeah. course. Doc, you do bio, you do chem, tutoring. Yes. So you're going to be busy this year. For folks yes. who want to do tutoring with their kids, where do we find you? Well, they can call me at 564-1347 mm -hmm. or they can email me at biochemtutor100 at gmail.com. Where were you when I was getting a three in bio? <laughs> Seriously, thank you for being here this thank morning. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you. Dr. Carla Hilton, um, education specialist and tutor, biochem tutoring. Went through a lot to be here this morning, so I appreciate you being <laughs> thank here. You. So to come on, smile. Miss Universe Jamaica 2018 contestants. We meet some more of them. After the break, though, it is news in five.